This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a Viking gas oven where the door will not close on its own so it's a little bit open all the time and the light sometimes goes on and sometimes it won't heat. A lot of the heat escapes. So this is due to worn out hinges. We're gonna change the hinge and this is how you do it. This is a little bit different from most Viking ovens. Um, most Viking ovens, the hinge assembly is located inside the oven cavity. In this case, they're located inside the oven door. So it's a little bit different procedure. I think this might be the only video that shows this. There's little pins that come with the new hinges and here we can see the part number for the hinges. We'll put a link in the video or in the description below the video so you can order these hinges. And you always want to replace both hinges at the same time, even though only one might be worn out. So we're putting these little pins in the holes, and we're going to remove these two plates on the right and left hand side. They're only held in by one Phillips head screw. So we'll take out the Phillips head screw and we can take these little plates off. And then with the pins in position, as we close the door to about 30 degrees, we'll be able to pull the door right out of the oven cavity. Then we're gonna put the door on a suitable working surface so we can do the hinge exchange. So we're just pulling out that other cover, get that off to the side. Now we're closing the door and we're lifting and pulling back slightly and it disconnects. So now we're going to take out these screws on the bottom of the door and this is holding in the uh, front plate of the door where the handle is. So there's a group of these we have to take out. Oh, they have same, uh, let's see, four, five, five in total. And they're silver colored. So we're going to zip those out with a Phillips head screwdriver. And then there's two screws here, two black screws. These are, this is near, actually near the top. This looks like the bottom, but it's actually the top of the oven door on the inside. There's two of them. Once those are out, we can set the oven door down and then remove the top panel and get that out of the way. That's going to give us good access to the hinges. Hinges are held in by a series of Phillips head screws that we have to remove also. So here's one of the hinges, and uh, one of the difficulties with the new hinge and, and the old hinge is these little pins that are used to help you take the door out have to be um, taken out of the uh, new hinge and put into the old one to help get the door out. But once you get the door out, you then have to take the pin out of the old hinge and reinsert it back into the new hinge. And it's kind of tricky because there's a lot of spring tension. So I'm using uh, a little hammer here to help keep the hinge in position while I do that pin switch. Now I'm putting the new hinge into position and I'm adding a Phillips head screw here at the top of the hinge to attach it to the door. So it's held in by three screws, one here at the top and then a couple at the bottom. We're going to show how the how this hinge is removed here in a second when we show the other side. So I'm putting in the screw to hold it on the bottom and then one comes in from the side. So it's held in really securely. And actually there's one more on the side at the top, so a lot of screws holding that in. Get that one tight, and we'll switch over to the other side. That one's all ready to go. So 
So if you have a like a card table or something, it's probably better to do that than on the floor here. We just didn't have a good suitable surface. So this is the old one. We're going to take it out. This shows you how to take the old one out. You have to just zip out those Phillips head screws, one on the bottom, one on the side. Another one on the side near the top, <clears throat> and then one right in the middle on the top. And once those are out, you can just pull that whole hinge out. You can see on this hinge near the top, the spring is pretty messed up. So that comes out, and then there's a bracket on there that we have to remove, a Phillips head screw and take that bracket and switch it over to the new hinge because it doesn't come with that bracket. Also I gotta do that goofy uh, little pin switch because that's what's holding the spring out in a position where I can work with it. I just put that uh, bracket from the old one over to the new one. It's only held in by a Phillips head screw. Now I can insert the new hinge and spring into the door and then I can add those Phillips head screws to hold it in. So just be aware when the door is fully put together, it is pretty heavy, so be careful not to hurt your back when you're taking it on and off of the oven. So we're putting in that one screw at the top. We got one at the bottom on the side, putting that in. One on the side near the top. We get one here at the bottom. That's the one that hooks up to that bracket that we added onto the hinge. And zip that one in. Get this one on the side. Oh, I'm sorry, this is on the other, this is on the other spring. This is a little piece of insulation that um, may have come out when you pulled the panels apart. We're just setting it back in. Now we're putting the front of the door back on, just putting the two halves of the door back together. And we're trying to line up the bottom correctly. Then we're going to add in those five silver screws on the bottom to hold the bottom part on. So this is a double oven and uh, the upper oven which gets used all the time, the spring system was worn out and the door would not quite close all the way. But the bottom oven that barely ever got used, even though it's um, 15 years old, was fine. So this is just a normal wear and tear problem. The springs get weaker as we open and close a bunch of times. So we got all those screws on the bottom. And now we're going to go ahead and add in a couple near the top. So these two we added near the top are black color, Phillips head screws. And once we get those two in, we're done with the door reassembly and we can put the oven door back into the oven cavity. So just be careful you don't hurt your back. There's a couple little pins that are in the new hinges that are going to keep the little arms open so we can push them into the oven cavity. What I want you to do is to push it in as far as it'll go almost close the door. Keep playing with it until you feel like the little arms catch some pins on the inside of the oven cavity to hold it. When you feel like that's engaged, 
then you can bring the oven door down to 90 degrees to make sure that it's locked in. If it is locked in, then it's okay to reach in and pull out the little pins that are in the hole on the right and left side. Just pull those out. You want to keep those in case you ever want to remove the oven door. Now we're putting those plates back in. That's part of what holds the hinge in there too. So Phillips head screw right there. We'll do the other side and then you're pretty much done. You should feel like uh, there's way more spring tension now that's going to hold the door shut because the springs are fresh and they have a lot more pulling power. So no more heat will escape. The light will not go on and it'll heat just like it's supposed to. Probably get uh, maybe another 10 or 15 years out of that. So thanks so much for watching. I hope that helps. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.